The Nothing Phone 1 was one of my favourite smartphones of 2022. Behind all of the fancy and guerrilla marketing and also the very gimmicky glyph interface, there was real substance. It was priced like a budget phone, but it had features and performance, and to a degree, a camera system that started to knock on the door of the flagship competition. And it was one of the lightest and, I think, best looking phones of last year. And starting a brand new smartphone brand in this era of, let's be honest, fairly dull phones, apart from the ones that flip and fold, is very brave. But Nothing knows exactly what it's doing, and now we have the successor to the Nothing Phone one, the Nothing Phone 2. And I've reached two conclusions about this phone. The first one is that Nothing is approaching a dangerous crossroads. And the second one is that the defining feature of the Nothing Phone 2 isn't what you think it is. We can't get away from the fact that the Nothing Phone 2 has had a hefty price hike over the original version, £180 to be exact. That's a lot of money. So, what do you get for it? It does get off to a fairly decent start, on paper at least. So the Nothing Phone 2 comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip, so it's not the latest Snapdragon, but I wouldn't worry too much about that, because the Nothing Phone 1 had the 778G Plus chip, whatever that was, and it never felt like a slouch. When it comes to memory, there's two options. The first one is the base model, which has 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. If you upgrade to the 256 gig or the 512 gig of storage, you get 12 gigabytes of RAM. The Nothing Phone 2 display is a tiny bit bigger than the previous model at 6.7 inches, and it features a peak brightness of 1600 nits. And you also get the 120 hertz variable refresh rate. As for the rest of the spec sheet, you get face and fingerprint unlocking and IP54 water and dust resistance. There's also a slightly larger 4700 milliamp hour battery that has faster 40 25 watt charging than the Nothing Phone 1. And we get a brand new glyph interface on the back, which is the flashy lights thing. It does look pretty much identical to the previous version, but the new one has 21 extra controllable LED zones. As for the camera system, it's more of a spec bump than a revolution. We get a new Sony sensor in here, and the front facing selfie cam is now 32 megapixels. And powering this thing is the Nothing Phone OS 2, which is a brand new operating system from Nothing. That is coming to the Nothing Phone 1 fairly soon, if not now by the time you're watching this video. So that isn't unique to this, which I'll come on to later, but what is this like to use? You can get the Nothing Phone 2 in white or this nice new shade of dark grey, and I think it's a very handsome phone. Again, it doesn't look very different to the Nothing Phone 1, and you do have to get these in your hands to spot the differences. The Nothing Phone 2 is a smidgen taller, but not by much. And the biggest difference really is the rear casing, which on the Nothing Phone 2 is slightly curved on the edges here, which just makes it feel a bit more premium. The good news is that for a big phone, the Nothing Phone 2 is still a very light device, just like the Nothing Phone 1. When it comes to the size of the Nothing Phone 2, it's roughly the same size, both in terms of the chassis and the display, as an iPhone 14 Pro Max. But because it's so much lighter, it's much easier to carry around and stick into your pocket. I can't do this review without talking about that Glyph interface, and in my opinion, it is a massive gimmick. It's the thing that you'll play with straight away when you get the phone set up. You'll do that thing where you go into the ringtones and turn the phone around so you can kind of scroll through them blindly with one finger and marvel at these bleeps and noises and flashes. You'll show it off to your mates, you'll show it to your significant other, you'll confuse your parents with it, and then, well, you'll forget about it. But you know what? That is absolutely fine. Nothing knows exactly what it's doing with this. They know this is a gimmick, but it does two things. One, it's fantastic for marketing, and two, it's a genuine point of differentiation in terms of smartphone design. What other phones have this? None of them.
I've realised something about the Nothing Phone 2. Its crowning glory isn't the design, it's not the glyph interface, it's not the very smart marketing, it's not Carl Pei getting on a roller coaster with Casey Neistat, it's the operating system. Now, I'm not a fan of smartphone manufacturers completely ruining Android. It does happen, and when it does, it's a crying shame, because Android 13 is fantastic. Now, ironically, Nothing does quite a bit of transformation when when it comes to Android, it doesn't look like your regular Android at all, as you can see here. This looks very, well, very, very different, but they've done it tastefully and respectfully, so the app drawer is where you expect it to be. There's no weird interface elements that have been added that you have to turn off. There's one or two nothing apps that are installed, but they don't get in the way. The biggest difference is this icon pack, which I really really like. It is a bit confusing at times, and as you can see, not all apps play ball. So some third-party apps, and actually some Google apps as well, don't work with this icon pack. But the ones that do, I think, look fantastic. And these widgets, these nothing widgets, really set this phone apart. The settings app looks very different, but I like how different it looks. It's nice and clean. Again, they haven't fiddled with the naming conventions and everything is where you expect it to be. When it comes to performance, if you know me, you know that I'm not gonna do benchmarks, but this is a very speedy phone. In everyday general use, it feels identical to the Pixel 7 Pro, the Samsung S23 Ultra, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is a very speedy, and flagship feeling phone. And the battery is absolutely fantastic. I took this to London earlier this week and did some photography with it. So basically I spent all day doing 4K video, loads of photography, and using this as my main phone. It left the charger that day at 6.30 a.m. with 100% remaining. I did all of that stuff all day, went to bed, didn't put it on the charger, and the next day it still had 20% remaining. But let's talk about that camera system. I did like the photos that the Nothing Phone 1 produced. They weren't flagship beating, but they did a very good job. The good news is that the Nothing Phone 2 continues that trend and steps up the quality just a little bit. I think the Nothing Phone 2 takes some fantastic photos and it definitely has its own look. It's got great dynamic range, it's detailed, it's nice and sharp. These images from London, I think, look fantastic. It doesn't oversaturate anything either, which these days is quite a unique quality in smartphone photography. Blue skies are captured almost perfectly and green landscapes, I think, look as natural as they should. More importantly, the Nothing Phone 2 camera is anything but boring and I'd go as far to say that it will probably appeal to a much wider audience than smartphones that have a very signature look, such as the Pixel. I think the main 50 megapixel camera deals with poor lighting very well, and I love the photos that you get from the night mode. When it comes to selfies, I think the Nothing Phone 2 does a very good job of skin tones, but there's definitely a bit more processing going on than there is on the rear camera, and on some of the selfies, it looks like it's been a bit compressed, so it looks like you're taking the photo with a long lens, which is a bit odd, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. It doesn't ruin the selfie, but it's it's definitely worth mentioning. Now, things do fall down a bit when it comes to the focal lengths that we get to play with on the Nothing Phone 2, and this was an issue with the Nothing Phone 1. So, apart from the 50 megapixel main camera, we get an ultra-wide, which is okay. It's not terrible, but you do get some distortion at the edges. The bigger problem really is the 2X camera. I just think the image quality drops a bit when you go to 2X, and it would be nice to have more optical zoom beyond the digital zoom, which gets very messy. When it comes to video, well, firstly, here is the selfie cam. Okay, so this is the selfie cam on the Nothing Phone 2. Very harsh lighting conditions this morning, really bright sunlight. It is only limited to 1080p, there's no 4K. You get 1080p, 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. This is 60 frames a second. He says nearly getting run over by a bike. I've done nothing to the footage, nothing to the audio. What do you think? Let me know below.
In terms of video performance with the rear camera, we get 4K in either 30 or 60 frames per second, and the image quality is pretty good. It's a nice, clean 4K image. It features the same unsaturated quality as the stills camera, but it suffers from weird stabilization. I don't understand why a lot of Android manufacturers can't get this right. The iPhone completely nails stabilization. And as a result, very few phones come close and unfortunately, the Nothing Phone 2 falls into that bracket. Okay, conclusion time, and I have some very good news for Nothing. They are still the smartphone Rebel brand, and by that I mean they rock in with a very good-looking, fairly well-priced phone, which is very fast, it certainly knocks on the door of the flagships, and, well, they just shake things up a bit. The problem is that price hike, £180 over the Nothing Phone 1's launch price, is quite a big deal. The 579 quid price tag on this phone takes it out of no-brainer category. The Nothing Phone 1 was a complete no-brainer purchase. This isn't. And the fact you can still buy the Nothing Phone 1 is the Achilles heel for this one. So the Nothing Phone 2 is a very good device. You will not feel shortchanged if you buy this. And in fact, you'll still think, why didn't it cost more? It's that good. But it's what they do next which will define Nothing's future. Will that price keep creeping up? And if it does, will they introduce a budget version? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've still got time, keep watching for a link to my full overview and hands on experience of the Samsung Flip 5, Fold 5, Tab S9, Watch 6 and Watch 6 Classic. Link coming up.